Hi, I am uh, Chandrachur Bhattacharya and uh, I was there on the Shreya Live on the JU Shreya Instagram page last week, weekend and I've been asked to summarize the basic three points that I think uh, made was the most important takeaway from the session that we had. So the first is that try to do fewer projects but do them well. So it's a uh, quality over quantity. Uh, lots of people try to do lots of different projects under different professors and make a mess of it. Do not do that. Stick to one or maybe a couple of projects but do them well. Even if you're applying for internships, be it in the country or be it abroad, be it industrial to some extent and especially if they're academic, that they're sort of in line with the th same re research projects you're involved in back at JU. Uh, this will help have some continuity and uh, when you write this in your CV or in your applications, it'll look like it's someone who's persevering and dedicated enough to work on the same thing instead of just trying to uh, flit between multiple uh, projects and uh, stopping working on one as soon as you hit a roadblock. So, as I said, do a, a couple of projects but do them well and do not try to do far too many. The next uh, point that is important is that you should balance your academics and your research. So, when you're applying abroad especially, they tend to look at both your GPA as well as your research profile. So it is very rare for only any one to take precedence over the other. So you need to be able to do both. So you should keep a reasonably high GPA because, for example, most universities in the US would probably expect you to have 9 and above or at most an 8.5 in case you have a really good research profile. But typically it's a 9 and above and a decent research profile. They don't expect you to be coming in uh, as Einstein. So it's fine. You can uh, try do both, do them well, but don't, don't just uh, forego one for the other. The third thing is uh, when you're applying for a PhD especially, uh, it's very important to choose the right advisor. Because uh, first of all, uh, he or she is going to be the person who's uh, responsible for you for the next four or five or six years and more importantly it's his or her name who which will be the there on your CV for the rest of your life at the same time a good P PhD advisor is one who uh, pushes you to work hard probably does not cut you too much cut, cut you too much slack but at the same time someone who does understand that people do hit roadblocks especially in PhD when you're or a any any research uh, job so uh, they are understanding enough to give you that space, give you that time to recover and things like that. So a good PhD advisor is extremely essential. Otherwise, you'll either end up not doing any any, any decent work in five or six years if uh, he's too lax or if he or she is uh, putting too much stress on you, you will not end up doing well because of the stress that you'll be facing. I guess that is pretty much the... Uh, what I said last last week in a really really short nutshell and uh, like it's very important to be imp uh, involved in societies such as Ishre and the several other societies that we have uh, not that just in the mechanical department but in the faculty of engineering technology and maybe all of JU because uh, this is a place where you get to meet other people. You get to uh, see, especially if if you are in some place like Israel, you'll meet industry experts, you'll meet uh, professors from your uh, other uh, uh, institutes, or even maybe your own institutes, talking about things that they don't typically talk about in a normal classroom lecture. And you learn something new, and it is these sort of additional information and tidbits that will carry you a long way. More, more than that, you will probably have, you'll make a lot of good friends and this sort of network is extremely important if you're especially going to, into academia or even if you're going into high level uh, research industry because uh, there's a lot of cross industry and cross company uh, collaborative work. So it's good to have that sort of um, network among your friends or your colleagues, your seniors, your professors, all of it. So, I mean, just uh, to end it, I mean, be involved in Ishre, be involved in the other societies that uh, JU provides. We have a lot. So, 
I guess if you can do that and if you can keep on working hard enough to have a decent GPA and a decent amount of research done, it should not be too hard to uh, apply to research universities both in and outside uh, the country, India. So I guess that's it. Good luck. Thank you.